Hey guys and welcome back. Uh, today we are talking about the Canon EOS R. Just wanted to kind of, I guess, give my two cents about it just because it seems like everyone else is. Quite frankly, I think that the camera is a little misunderstood. So I wanted to kind of go over the things that I liked about it, the things that I think are important, as well as kind of the things that people are, I think, overseeing or misunderstanding with this camera. First, the camera itself, it's full frame. It is a magnesium body, uh, which is weather sealed, which is nice. It's got a OLED EVF, uh, 3.69 million dots, so which is the same as the Nikon, the Z series. And it's got 100% coverage, so that's nice. The screen, the back screen, it is tilty and flippy. So it's up and down and it comes around so you can see it uh, for yourself. That's one thing that I wish the Nikon had. I was kind of disappointed when I found out that the Nikon did not have that. So it's sporting the same sensor as the 5D Mark IV, uh, which is a 30 megapixel sensor, uh, which I think is honestly, I think that's a, close to a sweet spot. I feel like when you get into the really high resolutions, you're kind of wanting that for landscapes and things of that sort, but it's a lot of data to be saving. So I'm kind of happy, as, I thought it was a good number for them to be around that 30. The new EOS R is going to share the same battery as the 5D Mark IV as well and some of the other Canon uh, cameras. So it's going to be nice that going in you're already going to be able to be sharing some batteries. So things that stood out. Uh, number one, the price. I thought the price was lower than I expected um, early on, um, knowing that it was a, a mirrorless from Canon. But after I kind of saw some of the features and understood kind of Canon's message about this camera being an, an addition to your current gear, not necessarily a replacement for your other DSLR, uh, it kind of made more sense on that price. This being kind of the first in a new series and not necessarily a brand new, um, and not, or not a replacement for stuff that's already existing, it kind of made sense. We'll talk more about why later as well. Focus points, so it has the dual pixel AF on sensor. It's got 5,655 focus points, which is kind of a marketing uh, thing, because um, while it, that includes all the cross keys uh, for, the, for the focus points, from what I understand, I asked uh, Tony Northrup and I checked out some of the other reviews, and from what I can tell, there's only 308 selectable sections, so it, gr it groups a lot of those points into, um, selectable points and that's the 308. It's not quite 5,655 because a lot of those are I think shared focus points for some of the cross types. The focus covers 80% of the frame wide and 100% of it tall. So it's pretty good focus coverage with those with all those focus points. I know the Canon autofocus is good and it should be good on this camera as well, especially for video. You can tap to focus on the screen but and 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 push and drag with your finger as well once you, when you have it up on your on your face, but from what I understand the the push and drag is not super responsive. Could have just been some of the re review units, but in a lot of the reviews, um, folks were saying it just wasn't quite super responsive. It does work, but it's not super quick. It does have eye and face detection autofocus, which I was really bummed out when I found out the Nikon did not have eye autofocus. Um, it does have face focus uh, detection and tracking, but it does not have the eye autofocus. The Canon does, and I was pretty um, happy to see that they, they did bring that. The EVF has some focus magnification when dealing with autofocus or manual focus as well. You can be doing your focus and then you can zoom in and it'll give you both five and 10 times mag magnification into the image so you can autofocus live looking in the, in, the, in the EVF zoomed in that close. Um, in addition to that, they've got focus peaking, which is nice so you can, get, you can see where the focus is as well as focus assist for manual focusing. So it has kind of these, uh, these two points that converge on a center point and as you're adjusting the focus, you can see which way you need to go to bring those points closer to line up with the center point. So that kind of helps you with, uh, with manual focusing. Um, the multifunction selector, which is a new selector, a new type of control on the Canon, 
Um, it's kind of like a, uh, a touch pad almost it looks like. You can use it to slide your finger across and make selections or you know take your ISO higher or lower. Um, being multifunction, it also functions as a it can also function as a two point uh, control. So you can have a control on the left, control on the right, just two two functions. Um, what I've what I've heard is that the that the sliding on it is not quite as as responsive as like something like a dial would be. It's pretty powerful because it's customizable, but it's it's just it's going to come down to personal preference. Some people are going to like it, some people aren't going to like it. So, but I think it's a cool I think it's a cool thing. It's a new function, and I think it's it's nice that that they've implemented something like that new. So one of the other things that really stood out was the lens selection. Canon did a really good job with the lens selection. So they've got a 28 to 70 f2 with no image stabilization, which is kind of a bummer because you don't have in internal body image stabilization on this camera anyway, but still, still a nice lens at f2. Um, they have the 51.2, which is I, I've heard is larger than the current 1.2 a little bulky but they're saying that down at 1.2 you can focus down to negative 6 EV um, using single point autofocus which is pretty impressive because that's almost a that's almost complete darkness then they have the 24 to 105 at 4 um, which I read is a little heavy but it's pretty manageable really would have liked to see a lens like this from Nikon then they also had a 35 1.8 um, which does have image stabilization and that's going to be a macro lens Canon also has some adapters, so they have three different adapters. Uh, the first is a standard version, so it's just a regular adapter that's just mounting from the older mount to the new um, RF mount, the EF to RF. Um, that one's also cheaper than the Nikon. The Nikon mount is $249. Um, if you buy it with a body, it's $149, so you save $100. But the, Nik or the Canon one is actually $99 for the standard mount, which is a lot easier to get into. Um, with this camera and using if you're able to use your old Canon glass so 99 bucks which is awesome then they have two other other versions the second version is similar to the original one the standard one but it has a control ring so on some of the new lenses they've got this control ring which essentially acts as a as a separate control so that you can uh, change things like ISO or or the zoom or whatever and they're going to build this into this new adapter so you can adapt your older lenses but then also have a control ring to make those custom uh, those custom controls and then now the third adapter is an adapter that isn't going to be coming until february but it's actually an adapter that has a slot that you can add circular polarizer as well as a variable nd filter and when you put those in, they slot right. They slot inside um, this adapter. They slot right in, and then on the side of it, it has like a little dial. So when you're holding it, you'll be able to basically adjust that little dial, and then it'll it'll turn the uh, circular polarizer inside um, or the variable ND filter. So that's actually going to be really really cool. Um, so that's going to be the third adapter, but that's not coming till February. From what I hear with the adapters, the Autofocus is actually quite responsive, um, so really no complaints there. So I think that's a really good thing. So let's talk about the less than popular things. So these are these are some things that I, I want to bring up because these were a lot of people's complaints about this camera, but at the same time I think that there was a lot of expectation um, similar to the Nikon, and that people sort of misunderstood this camera. So the first thing is that it has a single card slot. Now, of course, everybody understands this issue. It hurts because you don't have that backup. Uh, being that Canon has said that this is not to be a replacement, but in addition to your kit. So I hate to bring that up, but it is, it is what it is. So the other thing about the single card slot is I was surprised that they stuck with SD, um, but again, the way that Canon's talking about this camera, it seems like they wanted this to be the the the, the new series. So they wanted this to be the first of the new series, and they this was kind of more of a almost entry level mirrorless 
uh, enthusiast level camera so they decided just not to not to go higher than maybe potentially have to put the price up so it is what it is and people will deal with it so the next thing is video recording footage you're shooting in 4k you're at a 1.7 times crop factor so you're 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 using a smaller part of the sensor um, from my understanding this was done to help keep the camera from overheating so i can understand that you'd be able to shoot longer rather than run into issues with it heating up and then not being able to shoot or having to wait for it to cool down so that makes sense i think that's perfectly fine reason to do that but it's just kind of a bummer that you, you can't really use the full sensor. The next thing is you're only getting 30 FPS um, in 4K. Other cameras you can get 60. Um, and then also in this camera you're only getting 60 frames on 1080p. You're not getting up to like the 120 that the Nikon is going to be giving. Continuous shooting, uh, I read that it was a bit slow. Um, it is 8, for eight frames per second. Uh, with the AF locked, so no focus, no no continuous focus movement there, and then it'll do five frames per second if you're using your autofocus. Now that's really not terrible, but it would have been nice to see that faster. Uh, and there are some times where if it's clearing the buffer, the camera might be a little slow. But um, but yeah, I mean it's not for most people that aren't shooting continuous, it's not going to be a problem. But uh, if anybody is going to be using that, that might be an issue. Overall, it's really not that bad. Um, people kind of magnetize to these issues and they just just write the camera off. But honestly, I think it's a great a great camera. I think it's it is a great entry into the new mirrorless line that Canon's going to be bringing. So I'm happy that they also put their camera out there. But it being positioned as an addition to your camera bag not as a replacement I think that's a key thing here um, don't misunderstand who this was geared towards this was pretty clearly stated in a lot of Canon's information um, their marketing material on YouTube that they put out so this is a this is an important point that people got to understand um, and they also talked about how they're planning for future models that there are going to be more in this mirrorless series that's something that Nikon didn't really come out and say clearly. They did say, oh yes, we have planned other stuff later, but they didn't quite say, yes, this is the first one in a new line of mirrorless RF models. Um, you know, they, This means that there's going to be more bodies coming from, come from Canon, which is exciting. And we didn't quite get that from Nikon. So it's good from, it's great to hear that from Canon that they are looking to expand on this platform that we have now. So it's not necessarily the mirrorless camera. It's the first entry in a series that's going to be coming. So those are those are kind of the things that I that are honestly not so bad. Uh, I don't think um, people need to get so excited about it. But again, I think Canon did play it safe. I feel like a lot of the features and things they kind of saw this as their first entry into this market. But I also feel on the flip side that for Nikon, they they felt like they really had to prove something and it really had to be done and all in one right there so they tried to put more into the camera um, so there's a little there's a little higher a little better specs than you'd see in the Canon but it seems like Canon is looking more towards the future and kind of the long road and they're just getting their entry level uh, or their first entry into the mirrorless series and then this RF this RF line or R line of cameras is going to um, expand. I think because of that, we're probably going to see some Canon mirrorless cameras come out a little faster than Nikon. I think Nikon's going to probably ride this um, this Z series body that they have right now for a little while, um, and it's probably going to be a year or two, probably closer to two, before we see another Nikon body. Um, but I think we could possibly in the next year see another another Canon mirrorless body. So that's just kind of my thoughts. I uh, just wanted to share it. Everyone else has gotten theirs out, um, so I felt like I should share my thoughts as well. So that's that's my thoughts. I just wanted to kind of talk about this. I haven't gotten to touch the Canon. I didn't get an opportunity to go see it, but I just wanted to kind of give my thoughts. Uh, this is just stuff that I've I've put together from 
seeing different reviews, reading up on Canon's website, and seeing all the, the material that Canon put out uh, about the camera, which I'm kind of surprised that Nikon didn't do something similar. Um, seems like Canon's really filling the, uh, filling the market with information about this camera and educating people where as it felt like Nikon kind of talked about the exciting parts and then just left it as is. There hasn't been a lot of information coming out since since the uh, since the announcement. So I thank you guys for watching. Um, please like the video if you liked it um, and subscribe for more. Uh, this is kind of a new thing for me and I'm having fun doing it, doing this video. I usually do stills and I haven't done video very long and I'm just trying to get better and better at it and just grow grow my skills in video and YouTube is a fun place to do it. So thanks for your thanks for your uh, comments, thanks for your likes and your subscriptions and I'll see you guys in the next video.